Hi, this is James at knowthen.com. In this screencast, we'll look at a relatively new token-based authentication scheme called JSON Web Tokens, or JOTS, which I believe is a much better alternative to cookie-based authentication for single-page web applications. I think the best way to learn something is to use it, so we'll build a simple single-page application using JOTS. We'll be using Koa.js on the server side and AngularJS on the client side. So how do JOTS work? Well, in a nutshell, when the client logs in, they get a token back from the server instead of a cookie. The token includes something called a claim, which is simply a JSON object, which includes whatever you, the developer, considers necessary. Typically, this would include the user ID as a minimum, but could also include other things, such as the username or security roles. The client saves the token, then on subsequent requests, passes the token as part of the request header. When the server receives the request, it validates past tokens and sends the appropriate response. Before we start coding, let's take a quick look at the finished demo application. We have a page that shows the current client side token. If we look at it right now, you'll notice there's nothing there. That's because I'm not currently logged in. We'll come back to this view in a few moments after we've logged in. Now let's go to the logs view, but as you can see, we get redirected to the login view. The logs view only works for authenticated users. We'll come back here after we log in. Now, before I log in, I want to open the developer tools so I can point out what's happening behind the scenes as we interact with our application. We'll go to the network tab and I'll clear the network activity so we have a nice clean starting point. Now we'll go ahead and log in. When I press log in, an HTTP post request is made to our server. On the server side, my credentials are validated and a token is sent as a response. Then on the client side, the token is stored in local storage. Let's look at the response and what you see is a JSON response with a token property. We'll see this token get sent to the server in a moment when we send our next HTTP request. Okay, let's try to go back to the logs view and this time it lets us. Let's peek at the request in the console. Specifically, we'll look at the request header and what you see is the same token we received a moment ago getting sent as a request header called authorization. This authorization header will be sent with each HTTP request until we log out. I wanna make a small but important point. When you first look at the token, you may be tempted to think it's somehow encrypted, but let me be clear that's not the case. It's simply base64 encoded. In fact, if we click on the token view again, we can see that the content of the token is essentially clear text. So I wanna emphasize at this point that you should never put any secure or sensitive information in your token's claim. Okay, now that you know how it should work, let's write some code. We're starting off with a partially built Koa.js application. What we'll code is the parts relevant to JOTS. We'll start off by opening our server.js file, which is the entry point for our demo application. At this moment, our app can render Jade views, serve static assets found in the public directory, and respond to GET requests by returning the HTML of our single page application. All right, let's start by adding a handler for logging in. We'll set up the handler to respond to HTTP posts when the route matches authenticate. Now let's set up a couple variables, body, which we'll use to store the post data, and claim, which we'll use to store the claim that we generate after a successful login. Next, we'll assign the body by calling the parse function. This will give us access to the posted username and password. To keep the example simple, I'm just gonna hard code the credential check for a username of James and a password of 123456. Now we'll build a claim object, which includes a user ID. Keep in mind, what you include in your claim is completely up to you. Now I'll set the response body to an object with a token property. So now the question is, how do we generate that token or the JOT? To do this, we'll pull in the JSON Web Token Package, which offers a simple API to create and verify tokens. Now we'll call JWT.Sign, passing in our claim and a secret used to sign the token. We haven't created the secret yet, so let's go ahead and create that at the file scope so it's accessible by other functions that need it. 
Let's add an else clause for when the past credentials don't match James and the password 123456, in which case we'll send a 401 status code. All right, now let's flip over to the client side and create an AngularJS login controller, which will call the authenticate route we just completed and store the returned token. To do this, we'll open up the app.js file found in the public directory. We'll create a function called login controller that gets passed the scope object, which we'll use to pass information between our view and our controller, the window object, which we'll use to store our token in local storage, the state service from UI router, the REST Angular service to simplify REST API calls, and lastly, a local login service, which is just being used to share the current login state across controllers. Let's create a variable called user that is assigned to the REST Angular object for the HTTP endpoint authenticate. Next, we'll set the login property on the scope to a new function that gets passed the login credentials. This function gets called when we key the username and password and press enter or click login. Now we'll have our user REST Angular object make a POST request, passing along the login credentials. Calling POST returns a promise. To get to the results of our promise, we'll call the THEN method and pass in a function with a response parameter. Now we'll use local storage, assigning the token attribute to the value passed back to us from the server, which is accessed by keying response.token. Next, we'll set the login service is logged in property to true and redirect the client side to the home state. Now we'll deal with the scenario where the login fails. We'll do this by passing in a second function to our then method. We'll just assign an error property to the scope object, which should end up displaying an error message in the browser. Now we need to wire up our new function as an Angular controller. This is done by calling app.controller, passing in a string for the name we'll use in the HTML to assign this controller, and lastly, the name of our new function. Now let's write the logout controller function, which takes the window object and a login service. All we'll do for this function is remove the token and set the login service is logged in property to false. Next, we'll wire up the login controller as an AngularJS controller, just as we did with the login controller. Okay, we've got the basics of the login and logout flow done. Now let's work on getting the client to send the token with each HTTP request. We'll write an auth interceptor function, which is basically a hook that Angular will call prior to sending each HTTP request. It's our opportunity to insert our token as a request header. Our auth interceptor should return an object with a request property. We'll assign the request property an anonymous function that gets passed a config parameter. The config parameter gives us access to the request headers. So if a token is stored in local storage, then we'll assign the token to the authorization header by concatenating the word bearer space plus our token. Lastly, we'll return our altered config object. Now we need to configure AngularJS to use our auth interceptor. We need to use the HTTP provider, calling the interceptor.push method and passing in the name of our interceptor. And lastly, we'll call our factory method and pass in our new function. Now let's flip over to the server side and deal with the token that's being sent in the request header. The way we'll handle this is with custom middleware. Basically, we'll check to see if the token is being passed then we'll verify the token and store the token's claim as a user property on the request object. Doing this will allow downstream middleware easy access to the currently logged in user. Let's start by calling app.use, passing in a generator function that has the next parameter. We'll create a few variables, auth header, which will store our authorization header, which if you recall is a combination of the string bearer, space, plus our actual token, token to store our jot, elements, which we'll use to store the two parts of our header value, and lastly, scheme, which should be bearer. Let's assign auth header the actual header value if it was sent. Then if the header exists, we'll split it based on the space that should separate the word bearer and the token. Assuming the array has a length of two, we'll pick off the first index as the scheme. Then if the scheme is bearer, we'll pull out the second element of the array, 
which should be the token. Now we need to use the JSON Web Token library again to verify the token. In other words, compare the claim with the signature. If the token validation fails, an error will be thrown. So let's use a try catch block. Inside the try block, let's set this.user to the claim returned by calling jwt.verify, passing in the token and the secret. Next, we'll write a catch block, but I'm not going to do anything. This probably feels wrong, but in our simple example, we don't really need to do anything. Downstream middleware will handle what to do with an unauthenticated request. And lastly, we'll yield to downstream middleware. Now let's write our log route handler. This will be a get request to the logs path. We'll pass in a generator function as our route handler, and we'll assign the response by setting this.body equal to an array of a couple of fictitious log records. At this point, we haven't really locked down the logs route. Anybody could access it. The way we'll lock this down is by calling another custom middleware, which we'll call isAuth, just before our actual route handler. CoaJS will call the middleware listed after the route pattern in sequence. If the middleware yields, Coa will call the next middleware and repeat this pattern until a returning middleware is called. So all our isAuth middleware needs to do is check if the user property is attached to the request context and yield to the next middleware or it can respond if there is no user, at which point flow is interrupted before making it to the logs generator function. Now let's go implement this isAuth middleware. isAuth will be a regular function that returns a generator function that takes a next parameter. In the generator function, we'll do a simple check to see if this.user exists, in which case we'll yield to downstream middleware. In our case, the logs generator function. If the user doesn't exist, we'll return a 401 status code by calling this.throw, passing in the status code, and an error message. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead and start up the server. Now let's open up Chrome and try it out. We'll try to look at the logs, which redirects us to the login view. Now let's log in and head back over to the logs view. And it works. Well, that covers the basics of Jots. If you found this helpful, I would encourage you to join my mailing list so that I can let you know when new screencasts are available, as well as provide other valuable information. Thanks, goodbye.